And good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Time Friday. Tonight, the 5th of April, Peggy Brenner will wow us with uh, some of her streamer tying skills. And the weekly tip will be a twofer. You'll have to wait a little while to find out just what a twofer is. But for now, we're the BTs from Boise, Idaho. Thanks to my lovely wife joining me again at the, at the uh, Zoom studio. Uh, we're back as a team. And introducing tonight um, our good friend Peggy Brenner, who resides in Florida, close to some of the best saltwater and freshwater fly fishing. She has been tying for several decades. Her specialty is flies that fish well, starting with the basic trout and saltwater flies, progressing to classic main streamers at United Fly Tires, and now classic salmon flies with a one-year apprenticeship through the New Hampshire Council of Arts traditional arts program. Retired, she had a second apprenticeship through this same program for a year so she could pass on her skills. Peggy was awarded the Dick Nelson uh, Teaching Award by Fly Fishers International. She ties for a select group of customers as well as giving instruction with a focus on ladies and children's classes, presentations, and demonstrations around the country for shops and club. Peggy was a featured fly tire as part of a Graceful Rise exhibit featuring women of the past, present, and future who are influential to the world of fly fishing at the American Fly Fishing Museum. Peggy is a board member of the Fly Tying Group and a past fly tying chair of the FFI Expo, past president of International Women's Fly Fishers, advisor to United Fly Tires, Peggy is also a member of several pro staff teams, including Whiting Farms, Partridge of Redditch, Regal, and several others. But mostly, Peggy just flat enjoys fly fishing with her husband, Jerry, and sharing the sport with others. And now, Peggy, the spotlight is all yours. All right. I'll take it back here. Let me switch cameras. There we go. Um, yep. What am I going to... I have to get the hook in place. I'd already started, but this is a um, a very long hook. This is a 10 extra long hook. This is a Heritage um, Alcock streamer. And I got these from uh, Phil Castleman, who used to, he was a exotic feather merchant in Springfield, Mass. When he was 85, he was still chasing the ladies and smoking full time. Uh, but this Alcock hooks are what Carrie Stevens tried uh, tied these on originally. So I figured I'd give one a try. I have a lot of them that I acquired in an estate. So we'll give it a go. I've got to cover the hook with a layer of thread and go back. My goodness, Peggy, that is a lot of hook to have to cover with thread, isn't it? Oh, wait till I start wrapping the uh, floss on it. <laughs> okay, well, it's a good thing bad. you've got a pillow, huh? <laughs> I actually thought about getting out my rotary vise, but then I looked at it and I would have to find a gun cleaning kit to get it ready. So we're skipping the rotary vise. We'll just do more. There we go. Do you do use your rotary when you've got a, an order? Of no, actually, like it's faster for me to not use the rotary unless I'm doing an all tinsel body and then it just goes on smoother. And, um, okay. and I'm going to use Danville's tinsel. This is, um, oops, let me get it at the right place here. There we go. This is size 12. It comes in about six different sizes. And for threads and stuff like that, I usually use Danville's. I feel a loyalty to the company. They, um, it actually was located about five towns from us when we lived in New Hampshire. And when, when I lost my scissors. Oh, no, I didn't. One uh, month, one of our, our historian, he offered to give, get me a tour of the factory. And I said, sure not realizing that a thread factory is no place that you ever want to go. It's just, you know, you thank your stars, you don't have to work there.
All right, I'm going to put the tag in. It's going to be three wraps. Come back up. Tie this off underneath. I'm going to keep this long piece here. And that's going to become my rib. I uh, I started with this gray ghost. Um, it's from the Gold Award. If anybody's working on the award program, yeah, but I'm changing the way I tie it a little. There's a few shortcuts you can take that are not in the Gold Award. We'll we'll cover them tonight. Um, let's see. Let me get my uh, cross out. I've got the orange silk here. I need a big, long piece. Okay, well, we'll leave it that way for just a short time while you're wrapping and okay. so forth. I'm going if back. To, I forgot the tail, and I don't know why, but for the last six months, every time I tie a fly, I've been leaving it off. So, need to... Interestingly, the recipe that I received from you didn't have a tail on it either. Ah, it's just a golden pheasant crest piece. Yeah, I see I that. Have I have hundreds of them, so I'm trying to thin them out. I'm actually um, disposing of half of my fly tying materials because they don't fit in the room that I have my stuff in. So it's kind of become necessary here. My, I had all of my sisters. I have five sisters, and I had them all over for a weekend. And the one that's in charge of my estate when I am gone said, you are going to get rid of some of this stuff, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and she ties is... flies, so <clears throat> all right. So we got that. Uh, I might comment if you want to know more about the uh, recipe. Grab your cell phone, take a quick picture because I'm going to go back full screen okay. in just a moment. All righty. On the floss, you just do side by side wraps pretty carefully. Well, it does take a while, and while you're wrapping that, if you don't mind answering yeah. a question, sure. Um, you want to know what what linear of thread are you using? Um, this is six aught or seventy seventy deniers. And little John is wanting to know if you're using some kind of a trick to keep from keep the floss from separating. Oh, I just run it through my hands. I pinch it. Um, this is only two strands, so, and I just pinch them together, and I add a little twist as I bring my hand back, just slightly, like not a full twist. Yeah. It's like I'm the machine in the factory. With these here, you want to start, um, I have a good quarter inch between the eye of the hook and where I just stopped the floss. What you want to do is the whole time you're putting on all these materials, the body, the ribs and all that, you're making a little bed to put the wing on, okay? And that has to be flat, otherwise the wing is going to stick up like this. And a Carrie Stevens streamer, you want it to follow the hook back. It should almost drape. Her theory in tying flies was that the front third of the fish doesn't move. Neither does the minnow. This is a minnow imitation. And um, All right. <laughs> Ah, the peacock curl. Gretchen just mumbled to me. She said, she's done that a few times. <laughs> oh, I have a dentist that I tie for, and I don't tie commercially anymore. I stopped a couple of years ago, but he's kept his standard order is eight dozen black ghosts, gray ghosts, half 
with a feather wing and half with a uh, marabou wing. Uh huh. So I get a lot of practice with him. But he's been a good customer. He's loyal. So. Yeah, we've got a couple like that ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I gotta trim off the excess without cutting my thread. Then we got the bucktail, and this is white bucktail for the belly. And you want to pick one that's like this one here is pretty well picked over, but it's nice and straight. It's not real curly either. Um, some of the people that tie streamers for presentation, they put all kinds of hairdressing stuff on them. Um, I buy these from a guy in New Jersey, and uh, I don't have to put anything on them. It lasts pretty good. It's a little too much. We're going to put this on so it comes right into the bend. Nice and simple. There. Make sure we got it under the hook. I don't know if the viewers have noticed, but that's a very sparse uh, application of bucktail. I cannot tell you how many flies I've looked at that had way too much on it. That's oh, very yeah. well done. Oh, well, there's, a, there's actually a reason for that. If you put too much bucktail, it flips the fly upside down in the water. Yeah. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, and if it's crooked, <laughs> it has an even better result. Okay, I need my golden pheasant crest. This is a big, long hook. I have them all sorted in these baseball card holders, and I'll use one of those. This thing. Straighten it out a little bit. You do that, you just push your thumbnail into it and put some little dents in the stem. Go right along. Now we're ready for the wing. And I've got my wing. I pre-prepared my wing. I have more than one way of doing the wings, but I'll show you how I pick the feathers so that everybody. I, this is a Whiting American uh, rooster saddle. What I do is I take, this is the top where it would head to the neck. I put it, the feathers going the same direction as the hook. This is my near side. This is my far side. I need two from this side, two from this side. So I have them picked, and this is a natural color. Okay, there's no dye or anything. And I like the natural color because then the wing isn't one solid, like light gray. You know, it's kind of, that makes it kind of boring. Now, you attach the wing, do it kind of like this. I always do the one that's on the back side of the hook first because it's easier to line up the front one afterwards. Again, that's a trick that I, I don't know if the people caught it or not. I can't tell you how many times I have messed those up. And you just showed on screen a really cool way to adjust the length of those wings. Oh, I have a trick. I will, I'll share one of my tricks. I have here four stems and they've been glued together with solar ease, which takes a second when you're building the wings rather than overnight. I have one set. The back set is longer than the front set. These are like a lever that you can adjust those feathers. But if they're the same length, you can't tell what you're adjusting. So I make one longer than the other. And it makes what it a good easy. idea. Wow. 
And um, actually, I learned how to tie these with a guy named Mike Martinique Jr. I learned I how to Mike tie really, really well. good streamers, but I also I learned a whole new vocabulary that I didn't know existed too. So, <laughs> <it's kind of laughs> I got the pleasure of tying next to him at a show in uh, in Holland. Oh, back right? in the nineties. Yeah, quite yeah. a fellow. Oh yeah, he he did he tied until maybe about six months before he died. We've got a question from Aaron asking. How long should the wing be? Okay, it wants to be the gap of the hook past the bend. And that's, I didn't measure this at all. I just eyeball it because I know if I pinch it, it comes out just right. Um, some people have them like an inch or two past, and that'll create like a propeller in the water. And then you won't be fishing anymore. You'll be getting really irate because it'll cause your leader will just make like a rope, it'll come right up on your line. Then you're not fishing anymore. You're just kind of spending time out there. Keep my uh, silver pheasants. I keep these things in like these are Tupperware type boxes. And I have the rights in one box and the lefts in another so that I don't have to sort. I do that. That's a good sort of a rainy day or a snowy day project. They want to be the same length, so. Peggy, are those flag feathers? These are, yes, this is from the silver pheasant, of which it's a bird that I actually really like. Yes. Another one going here. Uh, one little trick that I learned is if you take, if you take like maybe two fibers more off the bottom of the feather before you tie it on, it just sits a little bit nicer. And then we need a jungle cock eye, and I'll show you what I have here. I bought these from a company in Denmark, and this is a whole jungle cock that's been printed, obviously, off of a laser printer onto some kind of vinyl. And I'm not sure, I've not fished a fly tied with this. I actually like the real thing. And um, I had someone tell me recently, oh, you can't use jungle cock in this country. Well, if they're grown in Maine. I hope everybody realizes that. Because there's a guy that grows them in a greenhouse up near the Canadian border. And he at one time used to sell the eggs, the bird, or the pelt. And I called him to buy eggs because I was going to try to raise my own. He said, oh, I don't think you want to do that. He talked me out of it because they're fighting birds and they'll attack you when you go to feed them. They attack each other. And in general, a kind of a nuisance. A little bit, there we go. I had a quick question, uh, Peggy. Sure, yeah. This, this is little John. So um, on the length of the wing, if, if you, underestimate the length of that and it's closer towards the back of the hook will that also affect oh the yeah fish it'll ability? fish really well yeah it'll fish really well then you'll be all right okay so just if it's too long then it will it starts the helicopter it's too long yeah part. if it's too long it'll give you trouble if it's a little all bit right, short you. you'll be all right let's see i gotta change to black thread before i put the other one on I forgot. Hey, Peggy, this is Jeff Hines. How are you doing? Good, good. I wanted to ask about the silver pheasant cheeks. 
Right. Is the width of those the same width as the wing or? It should is be. That, it can it, be a little bit larger. Um, it shouldn't be smaller, though. I know that. I got into a rather heated discussion on Facebook with a gentleman that was making them all too small. And I guess he didn't like my comment. <laughs> well, I see the way you've done it there. It, yeah. It's wide enough to cover the wing and the mm -hmm. fibers underneath the hook. Is that the way right. you prefer? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. That, and I broke my silver pheasant. Let's see if I can marry him in. Oh, there they are. Now I'll just trim off all this extra around here. Peggy, what's the key to the length of the throat? The length of the throat, actually, I just put a little piece on to cover some, um, what you do is you can, actually, some of them have three float throats. They can go about a third of the way back, okay? And basically what it does is it covers all your thread wraps from previous, previous things. It's kind of a cosmetic deal. You can also, if you get into trouble and you're having trouble keeping stuff from going all over the place, like if your wing isn't setting just right, you could put a little piece standing up in the front in between the two wings, okay? Would go right there. Oops, I'm not tipped enough. There you go. Yeah, not too bad. Oops. The more you manhandle it, the worse it gets. Now, when you put these in water, it comes out looking like a little minnow. So it all just sucks together. That is a beautiful tie. Thank so you. I have a question, Peggy. Is that your wings? Was that two wings? Or four wings, four feathers, sorry. Two well, feathers. That's four feathers. Oh, four. The most okay. I've ever tied is eight, believe it or not, <laughs> um, on each side. Um, one of the really nice streamers that I like has um, three feathers that are tied flat wing style like that. And then it has four standing up vertically on the top. It's called a 9-3. And that's a really nice streamer to tie. It's a nice one to fish too. There we go. Except for that little spot right there, we're looking pretty good. Any questions? Now, if you want to do a green ghost, you would just change the color of the wing and then there's a pink ghost. Um, you can use almost any number of colors to do that. You could also mix like a light color feather and a dark one. Put the dark one on the inside, you come out with some nice cup, nice variations play with. All fishable, though. So since you only used a single golden pheasant feather mm -hmm. for that the crest back, which side of the tail do you put it on? Does it matter? Obviously, it'll spin it if it's on the wrong side. Do you split yeah, it? I just back? put it up. Yeah, I just stand it up. It's about five fibers of golden pheasant, just enough to sparkle through. Okay. Yeah. Then In this is... 
Go ahead. I'll having wait. trouble finding golden pheasant. I found a shoebox full of them in my tying room. So I will uh, I have to part with some of them because I don't need them all. Peggy? Yeah? I, I noticed you were always using curved scissors and I have not oh, yeah. done that yet. Do you, do you do that for most all your flies or special for the streamers like this? No, this just happens to be the pair I picked up tonight that I could find. I know they're sharp, okay? These are those uh, copter flies, the Italian scissors. I, uh, yes. Actually, I tied at one of the shows in New Jersey. I tied with the founder of the company, and he gave me several pairs. So Lucky so you. I kind of like them. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, well, you know, like somebody like Mark Pettijan is always pushing all the different scissors he has. And I'm like, oh, yeah, really? Do we need to really have that many scissors? No, we don't. We don't. I actually have a lot of Dr. Slick scissors. And when I teach kids, if they don't have any tools, I'll give them some stuff, you know, like Dr. Slick scissors, bobbin, stuff to get them started. Mm -hmm. And, um, I once took part, I used to be involved with Morgan Horses, and we did a marketing survey. And in the survey, it came out that the average Morgan horse costs as much as a used car, which we didn't want to really hear. But families, you know, you're competing with like soccer and other team sports. So it has to be reasonable. It has to be enjoyable. And, um, and I think fly fishing is the same level. You know, it doesn't cost as much to get into it. Unless you start buying, you know, rooms full of feathers, then you're talking about some money. But, um, you know, the average kid is can't stay in it, you know, if it's too expensive. And I've had kids where their father changed oil at the local mu mobile station and Orvis was sponsoring him. And um, he took part in one of my classes once. Excellent tire and the kid could cast. He was 10 years old, you know, but... There was no way dad was going to let him get into fly fishing unless it was taken care of. So we all, we sponsored him. And now we have a young man, he's from Bosnia. And when I met him, he was 13 and trying to sell flies at a show. And they put him at a table with me because I was the only lady and he was the only kid. And that kid could sell flies because he had to. Now he's in graduate school, all paid for. You know, he's pretty smart. So he'll, he'll stay with it. Uh, Peggy, this is Al. We, uh, we took a hit out here and lost our Wi-Fi, so thankfully you were able to continue on. Uh, yeah. and, uh, just letting you know we're back home. Oh, okay. All right. That's right. Now, do you guys have snow or bad? You know, New England had snow and then an earthquake on top of it, so. That's we had like... snow this morning, but we did, we, if we've had an earthquake, we weren't aware, aware of it. We, ah. we thought Motation of travel, but the, it's warm enough. The snow isn't staying; it's just raining, and we're having really kind of unsettled spring weather. So I'm thinking that maybe ah. that we lost our Wi-Fi. So we're on the cell phone. So we'll oh, no. and what we can do at this point. Yeah, we um, when we get later towards summer in Florida, at two thirty every afternoon, they have a thunderstorm. And our Wi-Fi goes out then just about every day. Kind of a interesting thing. Yeah. <laughs> have to plan around it. Yeah, you so, do. So I couldn't I'm... figure out. When we first got here, I was like, this seems to be happening all the time. And people were saying, oh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, well, guess what? That's why you go fishing at 530 in the morning. You're back for lunch. You know, because you avoid the storm, because the wind blows up and everything else. Um, Peggy, Aaron Cully wants to know about the feather type, whether it's, uh, you better explain it to him. I'm not able to access all the parts of Zoom. I just, it flashed on my screen, so maybe you can get him oh, to unmute. let me, um, hold on. Let's see. Which feather do you have questions about? Oh, wait, you can't see that. It's not... Peggy, Aaron here. Yeah. I thought I, I thought I had read that uh, there was a preference for saltwater neck uh, feathers. Oh, okay. These what I use is um, I use Whiting American. 
the whole saddles and I just they're 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 actually their cheapest feather. Let me see if I can get this to show up there. Yeah. From Whiting Farms. And I use these. Um, these are natural light done. The other thing you can use is um viewing feathers has a, a line that Scott Byron has worked with them to he has custom dyes for certain streamers out there now and everything else. He was my second apprentice. And I explained to him, you have to share this when you get done. Well, by gosh, he's everywhere. <laughs> and um, he teaches through Fish and Game in New Hampshire a lot. So the, the feathers that Carrie Stevens used were essentially equivalent to the American saddle? Exactly. Yeah, you want a little round tip, not the pointed tip that, um, that salmon fly tires want, which means then you need a whole other set of, you know, hackles, so... Thank you. Okay. Any, Any other questions? Yeah. Comments from Peggy. Yeah. Oh. Any other Peggy, questions? Peggy, when, when, when you change the pattern, do you change the color of the floss on the body? Um, Not a lot. This color is actually... Um, the color, the orange is on a lot, probably a third of all of her streamers. It, uh, it's just poppy. It's a good fishing color. It shows up in the water, uh, and especially when it's got. Now, the other thing, and I should mention this too, is this is a really long, well, it's almost a four inch long streamer. You want to vary the length, okay, of your hooks. Like if you were to do dozens of these, you would do some half this length. It may be two thirds because your bait fish, your minnows, they come in different lengths and different thicknesses too. So you don't want to make them all the same. That's, otherwise you'll be out of luck when you're on the river. So Pe what, Peggy, what did you use to uh, to hold the, the uh, feathers together? What was the, the type? Oh, I used, uh, oh, wait, this doesn't have a label on I used Solar Ease today. You just put oh. a little dot on the stems, and I just sat it out on the hood of my car for two minutes, and it was cured. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I did. I lost a light and a pair of glasses, the last two things I went to. So <laughs> kind of, I'll be tying large flies from now on. If you put if you came out here and tried to use that solary stuff, it'd take you three months. Oh, <laughs> it's always cloudy and rainy. <laughs> oh well, there you go. You must be on the like Washington, Oregon, the rainforest area. Very good, close enough, Washington. Yeah. You can get a new light at Lowe's for about eleven bucks. They use them to find cockroaches, so it's oh. too. <laughs> you can you can oh. cure and then find cockroaches. Right. There you go. And, um, cockroaches, huh? Ooh. It's back in there. You want it? You want it? Between the host, the host. Peggy, you're muted. There we go. Good. See, we could use this feather here to be a little bit of a big eye. And that is, it's probably three quarters of an inch long. So maybe between half and three quarters. You don't want anything going, you don't want it to go beyond the wing. Okay, some people do great big long ones. I, uh, I keep the great big long ones for salmon fly wings, to be truthful. Sorry to be a pain, Peggy. We we, uh, we just got our Wi-Fi back, and we're back on as host and everything. Oh, so good. Are you hearing us okay? Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. I'll get out of the way. Okay. 
And now if you buy the whole, see these um, feathers up at the body of the cape? Don't throw those out. Those can be used for other flies, okay? There are some small wet flies that you can tie with this. Oops, let me put it in the front. There we go. And they make beautiful wings. Any other questions? Oops, I just messed up both sides by tossing around a jungle cock in its face. And the silver pheasants, I think now, most of them come in as strung silver pheasant. It's not sold as a pelt anymore because the, the pelt, you can get the tail on them and they have crests too. And the crests are used on the Magog smelt. It makes a really nice looking fly. Um, but for some reason, someone decided that we don't need the whole body anymore. Any more Peggy. questions there for Peggy? Yes, I have one. Um, seeing that you're down in Florida, do you use those in saltwater as well? I don't, no. No, I've okay. taken up a whole new, my tying focus this year is strictly saltwater flies, and then I tie these for fun. And in oh. September, I have a big show up in Canada, um, Atlantic Salmon Fly International. So I'll have streamer and the salmon fly. It'll be the same pattern, like Silver Doctor, Three Ways, stuff like that. Mm. Okay, if there's nothing else for Peggy, we can move on to the next section. Do you have anything else for us, Peggy? No, no I'm looking forward to my two for tips. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad that the internet came up in time for me to do it rather than make you wait another complete week for it. That would have been awful, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, Peggy, can you uh, send us your recording? I, oh, I, I, I think, think so. Oh. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Uh, I'll talk to you later because I think I can also download it off of Facebook. I don't oh, know whether okay. it's crashed off of there or not. Okay. Anyway, we'll find out. We'll find out when we get there. <clears throat> All right. Well, anyhow, uh, moving on now to the tip. Yes, it's time for the tip of the week. A two for a two for <laughs> oh boy, right. steaming chenille and peacock. I know you probably thought it was going to be something big. I'm sorry. But it's just going to be a steaming. However, we're trying a new method of steaming. We have always in the past used a tea kettle on the stove, and the steam that comes out is really super hot. I mean, if I remember right from back in in science class, it was something like about 240 degrees Fahrenheit for the steam. Or some anyway, it's a lot more than 212, which is the boiling temperature. But we have steamers in our house uh, now to, to help counteract. Uh, the dryness from the from the air here and help eliminate some static electricity. And I have one right next to my desk, right next door. And we're going to try steaming feathers with that fairly mild temperatured steam that comes out of that. And Gretchen's going to help me with it. She's going to do, uh, we'll take a, a piece of chenille and steam that, and we'll take a, a peacock feather. And uh, well, before we do that, or you might want to just Hobble out there, Gretchen. Take that piece of peacock with you. I'll get another camera and join you in just a moment. You think it's going to take me a while to get there? Huh? I figure it'll take me take me a while to get the other camera. We'll get there about the same time. We'll do good. We'll do good. Okay, folks. I am going to get this other camera. And I'm going to switch to that right now. And it's it's on the other direction. I better go. And there we go. And in fact, uh, that's where some of it's going to take place later. It's Is it, not great peacock. No, that's that's why we're tilted just a little bit this way. There you go. Oh. See if it starts to fluff up any. Oh, it's fluffing a little bit, but not much. Well, I don't think it has really long barbules on it. I don't think it can fluff. <laughs> Let me go get a different piece. And there's some really bad stuff. Let's see if that does anything all over the steamer. And it's not doing much. Gretchen's getting another piece of, of that. And I'm steaming some chenille right now. 
Ooh, I can see that puffing up a little bit. I don't know if you all can see it or not, but that's fluffing up just a bit. Okay, you got another one there, Gretchy? Yeah, let's see what this does. All right, here's another one. Lay it right down on there. Oh, yeah, see, look at those. It's fluffing up real pretty good, real good now, yeah. Not as good as over a, a over a hot kettle, but the steam is helping. Twist it a little bit towards the camera here. There you go. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. That's actually. getting better. Yeah. Well, I'm good. Let's wander back in and have you tie a piece of of the chenille on the hook. How did the chenille do? The chenille did real good. Let me switch back to this camera. Okay, there we go. I'll put that over there, get the chenille over here. There's a piece of chenille right there at your tying station. This is my... Let's swap, swap chairs around. I guess one of the things that when we were, when we watched some people tie uh, chenille, a lot of people will just tie on this fluffy stuff and have a big chunk up here. So what you can do is just clean off some of that so you have bare thread and tie that on just like that and then I like to do this just so I have a little extra oomph to my body oops I let the thread torque get me there and now we'll just now I want you to see with this, you could get really close now. And it's real nice and fluffy. Yeah, that makes it a good fuzzy body. That that fuzzed that up quite a bit because there was a lot of humps and valleys in that piece of chenille. It had been in the ball for months, well, years. Years. Yeah. Now, when we get down here and we're going to tie it off, I'm going to take it and just take a wrap. Then I'm going to clip this off, take my tweezers, when you finish tying it off on the thread that's in the core rather than a big glob caused by the chenille. There's a really nice chenille body. Yeah. So. Okay. Any questions on that, folks? For the lady that did it. Skinny about peacock, or is that that's it? Uh, that's enough. It would okay. be showing the twofer was to show the two. Quite frankly, I think in the future we will steam the peacock over a steam kettle rather than the one in the office. But it worked really fine on that on that chenille. Yeah. Any questions from you all? It's a question of curiosity. Oh, oh, go ahead. I have a question. One of my, I've worked with two apprentices and the first one was a younger guy. And he said, well, don't you want a microwave? And he, he, instead of steaming over my kettle, I mean, he would take like really good dyed turkey for salmon flies and put them in the microwave in a wet paper towel for 30 to 45 seconds. And it did the same thing. Ah, oh, what a cool idea. We've got to try that. Yeah, we'll try that. We'll, we'll try that before we turn the TV on here in just a few minutes. <laughs> Yeah, just oh, make sure uh, there's no metal in that thing. Cattle, you know? We used to get um, from Highland Flies, which is in in um, well Singapore. Singapore is where their headquarters are. Anyway, we from Eric or uh, Alex was his name. We used to get Ox Jackson. We used to get what he called decent garbage, and it was overruns, mistakes, and it would be like a a big bag of this stuff and it was all just jam jammed in this bag so the flies were kind of mess squished together and we used to put those in a, a sieve over mm -hmm. the pot yeah, a big sieve like you, you strain spaghetti with or something like that it was really fun to watch because those flies would mm -hmm. all those dance in there and jumping they, around yeah they yeah. Just had a square dance in the in the sieve and they looked beautiful when you were done oh yeah so yeah so that was eric stevenson not not alec jackson so did so you ever? It it, in absence ever, of steaming, could you wet the feather or chenille and use a hair dryer on the heat setting? Yeah, you could, but 
one of the things is if you get it too wet, then it's kind of time consuming. I, I think I'd be careful. Um, maybe spritz it with a spritzer. Yeah, and we have used the hair dryer, and it's just another another tip that we will do down the road again. But we've already done that tip a few times. We never tried the steamer in our office. That's the only thing different tonight <laughs> for the twofer. But the twofer got a whole bunch of you. I can see that right now. So, do, have you ever used a steam iron? You know where you you know those oh. you just set it up vertical and push the steam button. Do you ever? Uh, uh, no, I have not. not a bad idea. Steam iron never works right, so I don't know. I don't you know. Have oh, steam iron have those that closed steamers. Yeah. That would work. Yeah. 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 yeah I was yeah, thinking about a wallpaper steamer too. That might work. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Any other questions before we do the wrap and go into the share? I don't go into the sharing. I'm sorry. Okay, it's that time on BTs to do sharing. This is where all of you in the audience chat with each other and us, giving us ideas and so forth. Yeah, Jim. It's my 81st birthday. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Jim. Happy yeah. birthday to you, yeah. Jim. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, happy birthday. If you do want to sing for me. I think hey, man, I'll sing him happy birthday. I really do. I, <laughs> I used to play in a rock band, John, and they would pay me not to sing, so that's not happening tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm worse than he is. <laughs> no comment. Anyway, we're to sharing. Who would like to share first? Is Evelyn on tonight? I didn't see her come in. Oh, okay. No. Who would like to share first? Al, oh, it's Neil. Yeah, Neil. Since you have a spot, uh, uh, spotlight, yeah. Yeah, since you have a very okay. artistic woman tying tonight, um, I had read the book by a thread, which is the history of uh, women fly tying in America, and then I was able to get. It might be a reflection off of this. Oh my. Oh, no, those, are, nice. those are all yeah. tied by Francis Stern. Wow. Wow, that is gorgeous. Yeah. Thank Steve, you. Steve, 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 Steve. Plated them for me up here in Washington. Nice. Wonderful. Well, Anybody, any, anything else there? We'll do it again next week. For now, it's a wrap, though. Until next time.